Ben's giving you a look inside these powerful DX locomotives at the engine that drives the train. Ian, these have also got some serious stopping power as well in terms of the braking system. Yes, we'll look at on, on this locomotive in particular, we've got six driving axles. Each axle has two wheels and so for every wheel on the train we have a brake cylinder. So there's a, a total of 12 brake cylinders to control the braking on the locomotive. It's uh, operated by the, the locomotive engineer in the cab through a series of uh, compressed air and lever operation which allows, puts the, the brake pad onto the wheel. And if you have a look over here, this is the brake cylinder which controls the, uh, the which actually puts the brakes onto the, onto the locomotive wheel down here. Yep. It is a variable control, so you can vary the amount of effort, braking effort you put onto that, onto the locomotive to slow the train down. What, what are those variables to take into consideration in terms of slowing down? Because there's lots of factors that will determine when and how much you need to apply brakes. Well, there's mainly four different vari variations. One of them is the gradient, so if you're going down a steep hill, you've got to brake pretty more than what you would on the flat area. So you're, sl you're also slowing down for curves. You've got to consider the weather conditions, if it's wet or dry, because the wet weather will affect your braking, it'll make it worse. And there's also the speed of your train. You have to control the speed of your train with your brakes to slow down for different areas. And I guess if the train's heavy, the heavier, it's going to take more braking as well. Most definitely, yeah. They, the weight of the train is a, quite an important factor for slowing the train down, so you've got to be well aware. So with a heavier train, if you want to stop somewhere, you've got to start braking further out to slow that train down to be able to stop at that area you want to stop at. And sometimes you can use that uh, sandbox to help with the uh, traction, can't you? That's correct. So the sandbox over here, is, uh, I'll just open the lid on it and show you inside. So that, this box here is full of sand. And we use that for, uh, for traction. It actually sprays a minute amount of sand on the rail when we go up hills to stop the wheels from spinning. It's also used in emergency braking where when you put the train into emergency brake, it sprays some sand on the rail too to uh, enhance the, uh, the braking capabilities of the, of the locomotive and the train. So if you've got a 2,000 ton train on behind you and you're doing 80 kilometres an hour, it can take in anything up from, uh, depending on the weather, like in dry conditions, 800 metres right up to 1,400 metres to stop a 2,000 tonne train. Whereas a motor car would be, take how long, well, how much? Is, a motor car usually at 80, 80 kilometres an hour on a dry road would probably take 60 to 80 metres to stop. Hey, well thanks, and this is uh, you know, really important stuff when we're considering train safety, so cheers Ian. Thank you.